Hello and welcome to the English Like a Native podcast. My name is Anna and you are listening to week 23, day two of Your English Five a Day. This is the series that aims to increase your active vocabulary by deep diving into five pieces every day of the working week. And you can get more from your listening experience by becoming a Plus member, which not only helps to support this podcast to continue and to grow, but also gives you access to bonus material, including additional episodes, transcripts and vocabulary lists. I'll put a link in the show notes. We start today's episode with a verb and it is subside subside. We spell this S-U-B-S-I-D-E, subside. If something subsides, it becomes less, less intense, less violent, less severe. It decreases or diminishes. So I might say the pain in my back has subsided. It has decreased. Here's another example. The storm began to subside as the winds calmed and the rains stopped. I often find that if I become hungry and I don't satisfy that hunger, I start to get a really strong pain in my stomach and the hunger becomes a painful hunger. But if I continue to ignore that need to eat, then the pain eventually subsides and I move into this state where I don't feel hungry at all. Actually, it almost completely goes. And then I can last for a little while longer without the niggle of hunger saying, you've got to go and eat something. Okay, next on the list is the phrasal verb perk up. Perk up. We spell this perk, P-E-R-K, up, U-P, perk up. This is a separable phrasal verb, so we could say perk someone up. So I could perk you up if you're feeling down. So what does it mean exactly? Well, to perk up or to perk someone up is to make them become happier or feel better or more energetic This is a phrasal verb I often use when my sons or my friends are looking or seeming a little unwell. They are quiet. They are, you know, not so much themselves. They are less energetic. They sit there looking pale and tired. But then after a cup of tea or a glass of water or a little bit of rest, they may perk up. They become brighter, they become more talkative, more energetic, and they seem a little better. So I say, oh, you've really perked up. That's good. Maybe you can go to school today. (laughs) Okay, so to perk up. Here's another example sentence. You've had a tough few days studying for your exam. Why don't we go paintballing this weekend? It might just perk you up. What helps you to perk up when you're feeling down or if you're feeling tired? I always find the sunshine and more warmth in the air perks me up. During the winter, I really struggle with my mood, especially if it's a dark grey day or if we've had an entire week of bad weather and I haven't seen the sun at all and it's just cold all the time. A bit of warmth and a bit of light really helps to perk me up. Music is another thing that perks me up. If I'm feeling low on energy or maybe a little bit down in my mood, putting on a good song and having a sing-along and a bit of a boogie, that can really perk me up. Most people say coffee perks them up in the morning. Right, moving on. Our next word today is a noun and it is Routine. Routine. We spell this R O U T I N E. Routine. 
Make sure that you're pronouncing that first vowel as oo, not row. Roo, routine. So a routine is a fixed or typical way of doing something. For example, in the morning, my routine is generally the same. I wake up first. I open the curtains. I wake up everybody else in the house. We all get dressed. Sometimes I will have a shower before getting dressed. It depends on what I've done the night before. But the children just have a wash and they get dressed and then we come downstairs and we have breakfast. Then after breakfast, we brush our teeth and we pack our bags and then we head out to do the school run. So that's our morning routine and our bedtime routine is the same routine every night. Do you have a set routine of getting up in the morning or does it change from day to day? Here's an example sentence. I love working in TV. There's no fixed routine. Every day is different and brings new challenges. Okay, next on the list is another noun and it is semblance. Semblance. We spell this S E M B L A N C E. Semblance. Semblance. Semblance is the outward appearance of something, how something looks, to have the look of something. It's very similar to the word resemblance, to resemble something. So it gives the impression of something. Here's an example sentence. The politician's calm demeanour and confident smile gave a semblance of sincerity, but his actions spoke otherwise. So in that example, we're saying that the politician, his whole way of being and his confident smile gave a semblance of it looked like he was being sincere. He was being honest because of his smile and how confident he was and how calm he was. But his actions, what he actually did, suggested that he wasn't being honest. He wasn't being sincere. Okay, next and last on our list for today is an adjective and it is stand out. Stand out. We spell this S T A N D O U T. Stand out. If something or someone is described as stand out, then they are noticed for being exceptional, for being better than others for being the best example of something. So, for example, if we are all running a race and of the 10 people who ran the race, three people had very good times. So three people ran it in the fastest time, but one person in particular was way ahead of everybody else. You could say they are a standout runner. They were the standout performance of the day. Or they gave the standout performance of the day. So it was better than everyone else. It was standout. Here's another example. I think your painting of the flower garden was definitely the standout piece in the art exhibition. Would you consider selling it? All right. That's our five for today. Let's do a quick recap. So we started with the verb subside, subside, to become less or to decrease. Then we had the phrasal verb perk up, to become happier or brighter or more energetic. Then we had the noun routine, which is a fixed way of doing things on a regular basis. Then we had the noun semblance, a look of something, so a, an outward appearance. And then we had the adjective stand out to be the best example of something, to be noticed for being better than other things or other people. Now let's do this for pronunciation purposes. Please repeat after me. Subside. Subside. Perk up. 
per cup. Routine. Routine. Semblance. Semblance. Stand out. Stand out. Fantastic. Now let's do a little test of your memory. I'm not feeling very well today, but I'm much better than I was. In fact, when I woke up, I looked like death. I was very pale. I had dark rings under my eyes. My voice was really hoarse and I couldn't function at all. I just sat on the couch looking like a zombie. However, my partner made me a lovely smoothie full of all sorts of healthy goodies. And after drinking that, I really improved. I suddenly became much more energetic. I looked like I had more colour in my face. My voice improved and I felt a lot happier. What phrasal verb could we use to describe this improvement? I perked up. Absolutely. And the groggy feeling I had in my head where I just couldn't think straight, that decreased rapidly over the following hour. What verb could I use instead of decrease if something diminishes and becomes less? Subside. Yes, my groggy mental fog subsided and I became much clearer over the day. My head became clearer over the course of the day. Now, I didn't follow my usual fixed way of doing things this morning because I felt so bad when I woke up. It really messed up the usual way that I do things. What now would we use to describe the usual way of doing things? Routine. Yes, it really messed up my routine. But once I had perked up and once my headache and my brain fog had subsided, I got back on top of things. And actually, I had a day that was probably the best day I've had all month. So what adjective could I use to describe the best example of something? This was the best day of the entire month. It was a real what day? What adjective? It was a real standout day. Lots of fantastic things happened. It was a standout day. And by the end of the day, I had a look of, I had an appearance of being confident and in control. On the underside, I wasn't very confident or in control, especially at work. There was a lot of things going on and I did feel quite nervous giving my presentation, especially given how bad I felt first thing in the morning. But to everybody else, I gave this performance that made me look confident and in control. I had a what. What noun would you use to describe this outward appearance? I had a semblance of a woman in control. Even if that wasn't really the case, I had a semblance of it. So despite feeling awful this morning, I was able to perk up quite quickly. My brain fog and my headaches subsided. And despite not following my usual routine, I had a standout day and I gave a standout performance at work and even gave the semblance of someone who is really in control. So it was a standout day for me. Now, let's bring all of these words together once again in today's story. Marcus, a 42-year-old seasoned events organiser, was looking at a seemingly impossible challenge, organising a charity marathon in the bustling heart of New York City. 
The event was not just another entry on his CV. It was a labour of love dedicated to raising funds for childhood education. With expectations sky high and the city's eyes upon him, Marcus felt the weight of responsibility on his shoulders. As the event day loomed closer, Marcus's stress levels were obvious. Every detail from coordinating with city officials for permits to arranging logistics for thousands of participants and spectators seemed like a huge and daunting task. However, as the marathon's start neared and he saw the sea of eager faces, Marcus's anxiety began to subside, replaced by a surge of adrenaline and excitement. The marathon kicked off with a bang, runners of all ages and backgrounds taking to the streets, their feet pounding the pavement in harmony. Marcus, from his command centre, monitored every aspect of the event with a keen eye. Despite months of planning, unforeseen hiccups were inevitable. A sudden downpour of rain tested the runners' spirits and the event's resilience. Minor logistical errors popped up like unwelcome surprises and an unexpected roadblock threatened to throw the marathon off course. Yet, each time Marcus felt his spirit decrease, his team was there to perk him up. Their support and shared commitment to the cause reminded him why he embarked on this journey. They worked tirelessly, adapting on the spot, ensuring that every participant was safe and every spectator felt the community's warmth. Marcus's leadership shone brightest amidst the chaos. His routine actions from coordinating with emergency services to rallying his volunteers underscored a masterful control over the organising of such a huge event. His ability to maintain a semblance of order amid the unexpected was truly a standout quality, turning potential crisis into mere footnotes in the marathon's success story. As the day progressed, Marcus witnessed countless acts of kindness and perseverance. Participants helping each other across the finish line, spectators cheering on strangers with enthusiasm, and everyone coming together for a cause greater than themselves. These moments, these snapshots of humanity at its best, filled Marcus with a profound sense of pride and joy. Finally, as the last runner crossed the finish line and the city began to reclaim its streets, Marcus realised the event's impact was beyond just the fundraising. It had brought a community together, showcasing the strength of collective effort and the human spirit. The marathon was not just a standout event in his career, but a standout moment in the lives of all those involved. Reflecting on the day, Marcus felt a deep sense of gratitude and accomplishment. The challenges he faced were routine in the grand scheme of things, yet Overcoming them with such grace and efficiency was anything but ordinary. The marathon not only raised significant funds for the charity, but also proved to Marcus that his ability to adapt, persevere and lead under pressure was a standout quality he possessed. As the city returned to its semblance of normalcy... Marcus knew that this experience would stay with him forever. He had faced his fears, pushed through his inhibitions and emerged victorious. And so, as we draw the curtain on Marcus's story, let it serve as a reminder of what we can achieve when we set our minds to it. Whether facing personal inhibitions or professional challenges, the key is to persevere. Lean on those who support us and always, always go for it. And that brings us to the end of today's episode. 
If you found this podcast useful in any way, then I'd greatly appreciate if you took a moment to leave a like, a rating or review so that others may find this podcast too. Until next time, take very good care of yourself and goodbye.